we had a meeting, and that's why I have a suit on. We had a meeting, and the um, investigation found that it is Santar oil, that there is supposed to be a mandatory evacuation of a thousand feet from where the oil reached. So we're talking about thousands of people that were in danger, their health was at risk, and there's possibilities of leukemia, birth defects, and miscarriages because of this stuff that they breathed in. And it's scary that they didn't tell anybody. Matter of fact, the pipe broke almost an entire day before anybody ever said a word. Now, there's reports that it broke a little bit, you know, six, eight, ten hours before that. People said they smelled some bad smells. But the official report of when a firefighter was notified and talked to by an employee, it was one day approximately uh, within hours of when they are reporting that happened. This is serious because they could have got a lot of this cleaned up or prevented. And for 12 hours, if I, if I remember what I read properly, that they were putting oil through this pipe and it should have been turned off. They had warnings, and they kept pushing the oil through. And it was just coming out, 900,000 gallons approximately, killed all of our fish, all of our animals almost, uh, that, that are on the river, and um, or near the river. And it's, it devastated our ev everything. So another thing at this meeting, there was some people really upset, and uh, they voiced their concerns. And nobody from Enbridge showed up, of course. Um, they don't care anymore. They're in court right now saying that they don't have to pay anybody um, that has legitimate complaints. Why? Because they're saying it wasn't their fault. Well, for one, you can see the picture of the pipe. It, it actually um, broke on a weld. All right? So that means that weld wasn't strong enough to hold what they were pushing through. All right, so for one, that's their fault. Two, they knew the pipe was bad prior to this. They were running at a lower percentage because of that, and it still broke. So there's another reason why they have to pay. Um, there's a lot of people that went to the hospital. Their doctor bills are not being paid for by Enbridge because Enbridge is saying you have to prove that it's from the oil. Well, these people are sick. A couple of people in, in Baker Trailer Park died. They had really bad asthma. Well, who knows if this benzene killed them or not. They breathed these toxic chemicals in for a month and, and they passed away. Now, how do you prove that it was done by the oil spill? I mean, this you're getting technical here, and it's hard to prove. Um, but I just state facts. I just state that two people died. They had asthma, and they died right after the oil spill breathing in, they were only several hundred feet away from um, where this is. And, and there's a lot of kids that got sick, and there's a lot of people that had rashes, puking. Um, uh, people are saying now that they have signs of cancer. They're that, that's what their doctors are saying. Of course, Enbridge is saying, well, you can't prove it's from the oil. While I'm at this meeting, I talked to a gentleman named Mark. He's in charge of the EPA here. Um, at this uh, Michigan oil spill. And what he says, really, I mean, come on. This guy and, and the lady that's there, um, I, I just don't get it. So I, I now prove that there is massive amounts of oil that's left at Talmadge Creek. Um, because if you want, go to Channel 3 News, and uh, which is in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So put that in the Internet, Google it. And then once you get to Channel 3 News, then what you need to do is go to the search area and look up Clean Up Worker. And you'll see me, and um, it's a really good article, but it shows where there is canvas, and then they, they, this whole area was just full of oil. They didn't dig out all the oil. Okay, they left it. Then they put this brown canvas over the top of it, and then they put um, grass, and of course the grass will grow and it'll look really nice. Well, in November, um, they took Channel 2 News out there, which is a news organization that went out with me, and um, they 
told Channel News, hey, it looks great. Channel News is on there. Oh, it looks, there's grass everywhere. It looks pretty good to me. Well, this is the thing. In the wintertime, um, in the areas where they weren't walking, they just walked in one little area, um, you fall through the snow where the oil is. And I fall down to my waist. Um, and you'll see that if you go to the Channel 3 News. And why this is important is because they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to put this canvas and grass over the top of this. Now that I have proved that the oil is still there, now the EPA guy, Mark, he is now saying that, well, we were going to clean it up. I said, why would you put grass over the top of it? And the lady said, well, we wanted to stabilize it. And, and come on. Come on, how stupid do, do they think the residents of this area are? Um, that's ridiculous. Why would you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and you put the grass and canvas over this area in um, September? All right? We're talking you could have worked October, November, December. You could have worked those three months before the weather got bad, uh, three months of digging, Three months of getting the oil out of there. Three months of putting fresh dirt. But no, they put grass and canvas over it in September. All right. So now you have this uh, canvas over the top of it. Nobody knows it's there until I bring bring it forth um, to the residents. And so, as I said, now they're sitting there saying, "Well, we're going to dig it back out." But we were going to do that, and and that was our plan. We were waiting until spring. Are you joking me? You were going to wait till spring to to dig up an area that you put grass on top of and was waiting for grass to grow? Does that make logical sense? People, please don't believe them. This is what they're trying to do to protect themselves. They say it's sediment that may be contaminated. Then once you prove it's oil, then they say, well, we meant to come back and clean it up. Then they were even saying stuff like, well, the oil moves. Listen, this oil in this area has no way of moving. It can't move. All right? They're also saying that the submerged oil is moving. The submerged oil is not moving in massive amounts from one area to another. So when I find oil in an area that's full of oil, it's been full of oil. It hasn't moved there. Um, it wasn't clean and now dirty. This is just stuff they've left. And I'm getting really mad and upset that they treat the Marshall, Kalamazoo, and Battle Creek people like they're second graders, all right? We're intelligent people. And you, the EPA, yes, I'm pointing at you, EPA, um, and Mark, and everybody in your organization, you're letting us down. I pay for you to work, Mark. You are working for me. You're not working for Enbridge. You do what is right for me and my community. I don't care what you think. That's your job. You get it done and you do it right. And if you don't, I'm going to make you do it right. I'm going to go back out there and I'm going to videotape all these areas again in the spring. And I am going to prove all your mess ups. And I was going to say something a little worse. But you know what? I'm tired of you hurting our community. And yes, EPA, you're the one hurting it. Embered screwed it up the first time. But you're not making them cleaning it up right. And because they're not cleaning it up right, that's your fault. Now, that's on your shoulders, Mark. Don't let me down. I told you face to face. I wanted to go to Florida. I didn't want to sit here in the winter time, And I could be down with my family, enjoying the summer. And guess what? I got to be here because I want to help my community. But I shouldn't have to do this. You have EPA people doing this. Why should I have to do this? Why should I have to spend 40 to 60 hours a week going through the river, freezing my ass off, almost getting frostbite, falling in the oil, putting myself in more danger from benzene and, and toxic chemicals? Why? Why is it my responsibility? You know why? I am doing it because you're not. Because none of nobody in your organization is doing it properly. You let me down, I proved you let me down, and I'm not going to let my community down. I don't care what I did in the past, I don't care what I do in the future. I do know that I'm giving 100% and I'm, and I'm going all out to do the right thing. And uh, I will get this oil cleaned up as best as possible. 
And, and if there's 5% left, so be it. But you know what? That 5% is oil that can't be cleaned up. I'm going to make sure the 95% that is cleaned up is something that you can clean up. Now, there's an argument they've been saying that you're going to hurt the environment by cleaning up certain oil. You're not hurting the environment, people. All right? Um, by sticking hoses with high-pressure water into the mud, you are not hurting anything. Nothing. The fish are already dead. You're not changing the ecosystem. You're not changing the growth of the population of animals. They're dead. They're all dead. The only thing that lived was turtles, and you got most of them out of there, or half of them. Do you realize that there is no fish in the river, and any fish that does come upstream into our river now, guess what? They die. So it might be a year or two before we're repopulated, um, which Enbridge, you need to put about 10,000 at least um, fish back into our uh, river. You need to plant 10,000 trees for all the ones you cut down. And you need to pay every resident that went to the hospital whether or not it is proved that it's because of you. But if they had symptoms and they said that they believed it was because of you, you need to pay for it, Enbridge, because they went there because of the oil spill. They didn't go there for any other reason. These people lost work. The businesses were shut down in the areas. Um, the daycares were shut down. And you're saying you don't owe any of these people any money? You sicken me, Enbridge. I am not against Enbridge, okay, everybody? I'm against the people that run Enbridge because you're running Enbridge into the ground. You are taking a good company and you're running them right in the ground because of the decisions you're making and the people you're hurting and the, the employees that you're firing when they do the right thing. It's sad. It's sad that a good company is going to go under because, guess what, BP bought half of Enbridge. Or, I, you know, I read stuff, don't know if what I read is true, but BP does own part of Enbridge. This is on BP's website. They are a part owner in Enbridge. So this is a BP Enbridge oil spill. So this is a whole another can of worms. And guess what? Whistleblowers um, in the Gulf have been dying. Two whistleblowers uh, from, uh, that were doctors that were bringing up uh, major issues are dead. And, well, yeah, you can't prove that Enbridge did it, but come on, these are healthy people that die all of a sudden once they have lawsuits and they bring up accusations. Um, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I've contacted the FBI. Um, they're tracing all my phone calls, and I have no privacy now, but you know what? If somebody does do something to me, um, maybe a video camera will catch them, or maybe um, the people that are protecting me will, uh, will get them. Um, so I don't know what to do except for do the right thing, go forward. I'm not a quitter. When I start something, I finish it. When I was in wrestling, I lost every match my first year, and I didn't quit. And I became MVP of my high school, and I wrestled in college, and I wrestled in the Navy, and... The reason why is because I'm not a quitter. It doesn't matter how hard it is because tough times never last, but tough people do. And I'll tell you what, I'm pretty darn tough, and I do not give up. It's John Bowenball, and found this on my car this morning. I parked my vehicle, um, my SUV, at um, Omni Bank in Battle Creek, Michigan, and there's cameras everywhere. That's why I did it, so that way if somebody slashed my tires, I would know who did it. Um, but this was on my car this morning, and the police are investigating, and they're going to check the videotapes and try to see who did this. But it says, Dead. Uh, make would be you. Model says John. Uh, payments at the bottom, it says Bitch. Um, it fell all apart. Um, I wish I would have took a picture before uh, I tried to... Um, take it out of my window, but it was all wet and it just fell apart on me. So um, I'm getting a little worried now. I mean, I've had a verbal death threat. I've had a written death threat. I've had all four of my tires slashed. My brakes went out. Um, this is getting serious and uh, it needs to stop. So I don't know what to do, but I'm not going to stop making my videos. 
I'm not going to stop, um, you know, showing people oil that's left behind. And um, the world will know what's going on. I just hope I'm around to see the end result. It's fine. So in case it falls apart for Let me just put it together first. Right. Tire number one slash Tire number two slash Okay guy, I'm set. This one slash two, but it's down in here. Not sure where this one is. I saw it before, but it, it must be folded under right here. There it is. All right. Okay. All right. Found it. And then this one here, right there. Four tires are slashed, and my brakes went out. I don't think I don't I don't think 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 I don't We're trying to stay out of this. They're doing it. Yes, sir. Okay. And if I get approval from a uh, higher up, then that. you know. Okay. So I'll get approval from uh, proper officials so I can go back in. Well, I'm telling you, you know, Channel 3 in a couple of days, and um, there's no EPA order that I can't be here. What's your concern about their their uh, job that they're doing out here? Uh, poor cleanup efforts. Uh, they're not cleaning oil. They said this area was clean. Um, and they didn't start cleaning until after I complained about it. Okay. I'm the reason they're here. Okay. So I wanted to document that they're here working now that I've complained, and I have a right to do that. And he said that he was going to call the cops if I didn't leave. Okay. One former worker is doing everything possible to get his story out there. The creek's right over here. A former worker blowing the whistle on Enbridge takes News Channel 3 on a tour of sites he claims still have oil but the company is not coming back to clean up. John Bolenball still finds ice packed with oil and is making strong accusations against the company. They were trying to meet deadlines. So what they would tell us to do is take dirt, put it over the top of the oil. They were telling us to take mud with uh, oil and throw it into the woods. They were telling us to rake dirt over the top of oil. And he says because he wouldn't do those things, he was fired in October after two months on cleanup operations. But Bolenbaugh believes the so-called smoking gun is near Tymage Creek in Ground Zero in Marshall. As I just wanted to prove that this is, uh, uh, this is all oil. It is all oil. This is not mud. Mud will freeze. Bob, they put this canvas over the top of it. This is just plain old canvas. They put grass seed underneath it, and that what's supposed to happen is the grass will go through. 
He's accusing Enbridge of using a coconut matting to cover up obvious oil, with the company having no thoughts of ever cleaning these areas up. The project director was scheduled to go out to the site with us, but said a significant issue came up. So we showed him our video. No, that is not oil. That's, that's sediment. Now, whether or not that sediment is, is, is contaminated, I, I can't tell from, from the video, but he, uh, the video, the, the individual is not needed. As you see, um, I've had a verbal death threat. I've had a written death threat. I've had physical assaults, verbal assaults. All four of my tires were slashed, um, and that's not cheap. And I had uh, um, my brakes went out. Thank God I didn't get in a wreck. Um, so contacted the FBI. They're supposed to be uh, tracing all my phone calls. Uh, they're watching me now, and hopefully everything will be all right. Um, we've set up some uh, cameras around the areas where that I'll be, and hopefully we can catch who's doing this stuff. And um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. And um, people, too many people are counting on me now. And I, I feel like people ask me why I'm doing this. I don't know. Just something inside me just said, you know what? Somebody's got to stick up to these guys, and everybody, nobody will do it. Who's going to turn down all that kind of money? I mean, we, we make pretty good money. Who, who's going to, who's logically going to turn down 2300 bucks a week, and some of them make five grand a week? I mean, um, with the times the way they are, that's, that's, that's a tough decision. It wasn't tough for me. I, it wasn't tough. I was worried about my friends and family getting fired, but other than that, this was easy for me. I always knew from the beginning I was going to go come forward and I was going to blow the whistle on Enbridge I, and, and SCT, um, which is SCT Environmental. I, I always knew this from the beginning. I just wanted to document, get videos. Um, I got videos put away for trial that you guys will see when, they, when that happens. Um, and um, I got some good stuff. I got some stuff that will put people in jail. And I got some I got stuff that will prove my case. And um, all this stuff I'm doing now is just to help help my community. It doesn't help my lawsuit. Um, all these death threats. I, I could be sitting in Florida right now enjoying myself. I don't have to be here. There's no one making me. I'm not getting paid to do this. I, it's not increasing any money I'll ever get. It's just, it just I, I, I feel something inside me just says, just do it, you know. Sometimes people, uh, I don't know, they just do things for the right reason just because. That's why we get medals. That's why I have a brown star when I was in the service. That's, um, that's why people get purple hearts. Sometimes you just go um, above and beyond what you're supposed to do. And you don't know why you do it. And afterwards, you're just like, that was my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, but most people won't do their job properly. Most people won't do the right thing um, when it comes down to it. And yes, we all make mistakes. I am not perfect. I've made mistakes. I wish I could change the mistakes I've made. I wish I could go back in time. But I can't. So should I, for the rest of my life, not do the right thing, not come forward um, when someone else needs me, not help other people because one time I did something wrong? Um, I, I don't see any logic in that. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, it, it's the right thing to do. I know that. I feel in my heart strong about that. And I don't care what. I don't care about the death threats. I don't care about the assaults. I don't care about whatever Enbridge or whoever's doing this um, is going to do to me. But I know that I've asked God to allow me in heaven, in Jesus, and. I'm praying that he will, um, you know, know that I'm I'm going all out um, for nature and and for for the people. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It's hard. I've sacrificed a lot. I've lost a lot of money because of this. Well, I've made some other videos about the oil and. And just start thinking, you know, what if uh, something does happen to me? And so I'm just, I'm making this video. 
I don't know if I'm ever going to show it to anybody. But at least it'll be, you know, on my computer and on my phone. If something does happen, I'm sure people will look at all my stuff. And I just want everybody to know that I tried. And, and I'm sorry for anything I've ever done wrong in my life. I'm, I'm trying to do what I can to um, make up for any shortcomings I've ever had. And I'm trying to help people. I might not always do it the right way, but it's the only way I know how at the moment. And I love you, Mom. And I love all my brothers and sisters. And I love you, Dad. And Karina, which is my stepmom. And um, I love all of you very much. And I want you to know I did this. And... Somebody's got to do it. Guess I didn't want to go the easy route. God, you know, I would have made a lot of money working, sitting back working, keeping my mouth shut. Could have bought me another. Could have bought me a nice four wheeler. Could have had a nice house by now because, I mean, these guys have been working for an extra three months at 2300 bucks a week. That's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, got work this spring that I won't be doing because of what I've said and done. Um, kind of really screwed me, but just know I did this because there's people out there that just can't. There's old folks. And there's kids. There's a lot of people around this area that are sick. And there's a lot of people that's going to get sick. And I'm trying to do something about it. I'm trying to get Enbridge to pay their medical bills. I'm trying to get Enbridge to stand up to the plate and do what's right. And they, you know what, they think money's more important than anything. The insurance company's paying for almost all this. Enbridge doesn't even really care. All they care about is that it's not going to come out of their pocket. That's what they really care about. It's kind of funny. I turn this around and make it about the oil. I'm supposed to be talking about how much I love my family because I'm not alive anymore and you're not going to ever see me again until we go to heaven and um, see each other again. I mean, this happens anytime soon. Then I never had kids. I've always wanted kids all my life. I wanted to meet the girl in my dreams and get married. And I wanted to be the best father and husband I could ever be. Guess that didn't happen, did it? You don't quit until you have a boy. We gotta keep our name going. You know, it was me and you, and. Uh, Sisters are popping out kids like crazy, but, you know, I don't have any kids, and you've got one now, and a little girl, and don't quit till you have a boy. we got to keep the name going. All right, Bowling Ball name's a good name. We're good people. And uh, I just hope people will remember that I tried to do what's right, even though I haven't always. I love you with all my heart. Don't you ever forget that. And I will miss every single one of you. And I know you all love me and you'll miss me too.